Wow, the tree oh just hit that far. Oh my bar. god, that was awesome. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's still Look on top of thing, that. Hey. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Okay, cheers. And it's a good question. Yeah. I'll get back to it right after this sip. Right after this commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so how's it? Oh, it's a melting pot of all the cultures and nationalities because it was one of the middle points of the Silkway. So we have uh, people from all over. You, you, if, if you visit, uh, you'll see people from all kinds of, let's say, European looking people. You, you will see people from uh, Middle East. You will see people from Central Asia, Asia. Uh, so it, it, it's, the, it, it's, it's insane. Hello everyone, welcome to this short series uh, of living in China. Today I'm here with my two good friends. I have uh, Camille here on my right side and I have Pascal here. Actually, we made a video a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, like two weeks or something. If right? you remember, Pascal is from Switzerland. But today we're going to talk about the ideas and the perceptions and different kinds of job positions of Camille. Camille, you are from Kazakhstan. Yeah, How are you? Yeah, good, good. <laughs> oh, good to <laughs> have you here. to be here. Yeah, actually, uh, he just came this morning from Qiandaohu. How far was it Qiandaohu from here? That's about two hours drive. It's a pretty touristy place. Uh, two hours drive? Yeah. But you came in the bullet train, right? Two hours drive. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it's two hours by bullet train. <laughs> so a bit yeah, fun. actually, it's quite uh, yeah. It's it's funny because we were actually working together uh, in the same school in the hospitality management school that we said before with Pascal uh, some years ago, and then we moved to different jobs. So it's quite uh, interesting story. So uh, to start with uh, this conversation, before we got into the topic of China, how is it to work here? How are the business uh, processes? how are the jobs and different things about China culture mm -hmm. so can you tell us a bit about how is life in Kazakhstan because I know you're from there and uh, just a bit of a background on how do you decide to come to China after some time so right. how, how was it there in Kazakhstan? Not to go in too many details I was born and raised in Kazakhstan Almaty it's like one of the <laughs> biggest cities uh, back in it's Kazakhstan the biggest one um, I think it's the biggest city and uh, it's a former capital it's a nice place to visit and I, I, I'm waiting uh, for these guys to visit me there. Um, I, I lived there until, <laughs> until I finished high school and uh, by that time I had one opportunity to go to England for, for, oh. for one month uh, to, you didn't to, know to, that, to study huh? English. So you were there? So, so how old were you when you were there? Uh, I was 15. So that was my first trip just by myself. Where was uh, that? It was one month. It was in Oxford. Oh my god. Yeah, so that, that was a good experience. Al Oxford uh, alumni. Exploring <laughs> by myself for the first time. Uh, improving some English. So that's why in China uh, now you're considered native English speaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not really, but... Okay. So you were there in the UK for how long? That was one month. And uh, that, that, it kind of spiked my interest in kind of international travel studies. At the time, uh, for Kazakhstan, I guess it was just, uh, people just started to send people outside to kind of study somewhere else and bring back the expert expertise and whatever skills. And yeah, you know, I was just reading actually not long ago that Kazakhstan, and I think you told me that as well. Oh. Like Kazakhstan is one of the biggest, I think it's the ninth, because I remember like I was reading that, is the ninth uh, country, like the, the ninth largest country in the world in terms of land. Mm -hmm. And I was looking like the biggest one is uh, Russia. Uh, if I remember correctly the numbers, I was just reading somewhere, it's like 18 to 17. So if you guys know better, then put that in the comments <laughs> yeah. about Russia, okay? Yeah, so it was, so it was a Russia, uh, Canada, US, China, then it was, uh, yeah, I maybe think Brazil, Brazil somewhere there, what else and then uh, Australia, Australia, maybe also big, no? Australia big, yeah. And then somewhere there in the 8th mm -hmm. or 9th, it was uh, ninth, Kazakhstan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, huh? Yeah, it's not. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's the ninth. Yeah, I happen to know. Yeah. And I think actually uh, Kazakhstan is a little bit bigger than Mexico because Mexico is like 2 million square kilometers, something like that. And I think Kazakhstan was like 2 point something, almost 3. India was also there. I think it's like number uh, mm -hmm. before Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. But anyways, it's so big. So how is the culture in Kazakhstan? Like, is it like a big variety of things or well, everyone is like... Well, it's... Cheers, back uh, oh, yeah. Cheers, guys. Okay, cheers. And it's a good question. Yeah. I'll get back to it right after this sip. Right after this commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so how's it? Oh, it's a melting pot of all the cultures and nationalities because it was one of the middle points of the Silkway. So we have uh, people from all over. You, you, if, if you visit, uh, you'll see people from all kinds of, let's say, European looking people. You, you will see people from uh, Middle East. You will see people from Central Asia, Asia. Uh, so it, it, it's, the, it, it's, it's insane. Uh, more than 150 something uh, ethnic groups. Or, oh, yeah? Um, so for this, it's quite interesting in terms of culture, in terms of um, overall 
uh, mentality, and uh, you, you can feel you can be whoever you want, and you you're still accepted quite well. And uh, yeah. So you guys are uh, very close also with uh, Russia in terms of culture. Oh Would yeah, well, I, I speak Russian. That's my mother tongue. Um, I happen to. So uh, your speak mother tongue is Russian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you speak Kazakh. I do not speak Kazakh. Oh, uh, like really? ethnically, yeah. Okay, so since we're on that topic, oh, yeah. I, I, I'm not Kazakh ethnically. I have a mix of many things, just like basically a proof Finally, that Kazakhstan, the <laughs> like I said, is a melting pot of everything. So, okay, so I what's, the, what's the like main ethnic group there? Well, Kazakhs, Russian. Kazakhs first, uh, oh, locals. Uh, they they're descendants from a mix of. Uh, Mongolian ethnic groups and others so it's a nomadic sort of culture and mentality in some way and if you talk about dietary habits and everything they, they would be similar to let's say nomadic Mongolian sort of lots of meat so, some vegetables not a lot of other things not a lot of spicy food for them so with your family do you speak in Russian uh, yeah yeah so Russian I happen to speak Russian as my oh, wow. uh, native mother tongue basically yeah it's quite like international community here in Shanghai for example because if you just see like here in this very short small community like uh, Switzerland then um, Kazakhstan mm -hmm. we're waiting for one friend is from Russia so you guys actually speak Russian to each other yeah, yeah. but I speak Spanish with uh, Dima because he also speaks Spanish uh, and nobody <laughs> speaks German with nobody me. speaks German with yeah, you. So. <laughs> uh, so it's quite like a little UN. So, okay, so you were there before coming to China. Mm -hmm. uh, what is that even uh, so like idea? You know, coming back through, to yeah. that, I went to England when I was 15. When I, when I finished high school, I decided hey, there was an opportunity for me to go and study abroad. And I took that opportunity. It was, uh, I went to New Zealand and I, and I studied there. Uh, and we always <laughs> look at each other when we talk about New Zealand because he happened to... I live there as well in New yeah, Zealand. So, I was in Auckland um, for a year. I was doing the working holiday visa. Auckland. What? I, 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 was, I was there too. <laughs> so you it's were... an old joke. It's, it's, getting, it's getting pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so I stayed there for two years. I studied a bit, but at that time I was not a great student. I would say I was mostly uh, yeah. I was studying. I was first time really living somewhere else, like full time student. But I was I was also doing my first job. Uh, I was working as a bartender. Oh. Same like you. Yeah, like me. Oh same my bar. God. I was doing in the well, in now Auckland, you can see. in New Zealand. That's what is in Auckland. We have some things in common. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you were there and then New uh, Zealand, and then after that? So two years, right? Uh, and at that time, there was an opportunity to, because once I started working in the bar, uh, I got interested in the uh, hospitality industry and tourism overall. And there was an opportunity to move uh, and transfer to a Le Roche Jinjiang, which is the place where we all met. It's a, it's a, what is this? It's a joint venture. It's not yeah? a school. It's, it's a, a way it's of a, life. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's, As the slogan would say. Yeah, so that's where we met. That's a hospitality management school. Where so the but headquarters... actually, maybe to go a bit more deep in that, actually, yeah. Camille was studying there first. Yeah, yeah. So, before we actually yeah, yeah, there, right? So I was a student there. Yeah, yeah, true. And at the time, I decided, okay, so I'm going to take things seriously because I definitely felt kind of bad that I wasn't doing that well as a student in New Zealand so I thought okay I'll, I'll take it more seriously I'll definitely do well there and I did. And then were you a student of the month? Uh, so but then why did you I decide some, <laughs> why did you decide China yeah. instead of another Ah, well uh, for several or, reasons uh -huh. uh, New Zealand uh, it's about for me to go from Kazakhstan to New Zealand um, it takes at least two days normally and I would have to fly with at least two transfers and I had some crazy flights like Almaty to Dubai, Dubai to Singapore, oh, wow. Singapore to Brisbane and Brisbane to Auckland, <laughs> more than two days and yeah, basically like a lot of fun. China is closer, <laughs> we're neighbors, uh, one flight or at least one transfer or just minimum one transfer and that's it. Um, I'm already here so location was one of the factors. The second thing is um, yeah, the, the school was good so the opportunity to be able to go back home uh, at any time when I had the winter or summer break. So then you came here to China to study for the first time yeah. in La Roche? Yeah. Okay, so you did that your uh, hospitality course? Yeah, so I did that, graduated with diploma, and then and then what, what happened then? I, I was looking for a job. Uh, there was either an opportunity to go and continue with the bachelor's, but at that time I decided, okay, I'm gonna 
start uh, supporting myself um, yeah. financially and I decided to look for a job instead and do the bachelor later, which I did. Uh, yeah, so, so before the jobs, for example, uh, for some people that is interested in coming to study in China, how is the process of your visa application, if you remember, like to come to China for the first time, was it difficult to come and apply through the, you know, like student visa? Did they send you a letter to support you to apply for the visa? So how, how was that process? Um, uh, some things have changed, but in general, until now, right? It's not that easy still. It's, yeah, it's, it's, there are a lot of things that you have to do. Uh, at that time too, yeah, all kinds of tests. Um, a lot of times for the initial visa is the, uh, is the most uh, of the paperwork, I would say. But once you're here, when you, when you want to get the new visa, then it's easier. You just have to do the medical check here and everything else um, is a bit easier. Uh, not okay. to say it's very easy in general, but it's easier. No, like once you're in, if you just transfer your visa, it's okay, right? But then, is it difficult also to get the student? I mean, the student visa is much easier than the work visa, not to get. Yeah, easier. of course, because for yeah, student easier. visa you just pay the tuition, you get the student visa. But to get the uh, to get my first job, it was it was very tough because yeah. um, at, at that time to get your first job, you need to have two years experience work work experience somewhere else, but in the same industry where you gradu graduated from and where you want to find the job. But how can you find your first job without that experience? Yeah. Well, luckily, I did have some experience in New Zealand, so I used that as one of the things. And plus, back home, uh, some of the things that I did uh, helping out um, with the family business, I used it as a working experience together. So I found just enough to be able to justify my first so working to... visa here. And it was pretty rare. So you, did you change from the student to... To work so visa I did, when I did you find a work visa, yeah, but I had to leave the country first because uh, you, I couldn't find it on time. I had to come back here several times on a tourist visa while doing some interviews yeah. uh, and looking for a job. And then you have to leave again, apply for a proper yeah. one and yeah. come back. So I had a lot of, I had, a, I changed a few passports just because they were full of different Chinese visas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what like, was your first job here then? Oh, my Sorry, first job here. No, no, no. Of, uh, no, 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 it's good. Yeah. But just before the job, I just wanted to say something about the student visa. Because I remember like some people also, they want to come here to China. Now, for example, I've seen that there are many opportunities uh, from universities. Mm -hmm. that they actually say, okay, so if you want to apply for a student visa, if it's less than six months, uh, they will send you a letter, you go to the embassy or the consulate in your country, uh -huh. and then you apply, I mean, um, you apply for the registration in the university, mm -hmm. and then it probably goes like around maybe nine to 10,000 yuan, I think, per semester, no? How much uh, is you pay? To study, yeah, to yeah, study. I think, nine, depends on the school, but somewhere there, yeah. Like yeah, so probably from eight, 1,000 yuan to 10,000 yuan, for example, here at least in Shanghai. Yeah. And then they give you the visa for a uh, student visa. Which and like then you can stay here. $1,500, dollars something like that. Yeah. And then you can stay here like maybe six months at least. And then you mm. can renew that, right? Okay. Okay. Oh, by the way, it would, it would make sense to mention the time frame because things have changed over the years. I arrived first to China, it was 2009. I graduated in 2012 and that's when I was looking for a job. And at that time, those were the rules. Now things may look different, so look look up for the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. just look, look it up for the latest uh, yeah. requirements. But yeah, yeah, so since 2009 until here, I'm basically I've been living in China. But that's already 15 years. Longer than yeah, before. actually, Pascal and I we've been here like 10 years, yeah, and, and then, you've been here all together from then, student until now working 15 years. Yeah, actually, because right? you have that study True. time. So therefore, like there's a lot of experiences in terms of different provinces and jobs and chains of visas, right? Oh. So that was one of the first ones, like you changed from the student to to the job. Then you were working. Since then, I've only been here on a working visa. On a working visa. So the way it works, you have this. It's called uh, like a residence permit, right? It's a multiple entry yeah. if you have a proper contract. Uh, a lot of people they they work here not really properly, right? On a on yeah. some kind of different. But anyway, I mean, some people even with student visa. But then that's that's a little it's, bit like tricky technically it's, it's not legal. Like, yeah. So I, I got this proper one. I spent a lot of time and effort basically getting this. Since then, I've been on this one, and you just have to re uh, renew to it every renew. year. How often do you renew? Every year. So, so since then, for example, from your first job, how many jobs have you? So, uh, to cut the long story short, <coughs> I worked as an admissions and enrollment officer and later like a manager uh, for the same school, the Roche Jinjiang, admission and enrollment for all the international students. And then I went to headhunting company for a, few, for a couple of years and then I went back home actually for one year. I needed again to do some uh, 
helping out uh, with the family matters. Then I came back and started working as a lecturer. Um, this, this is when we met again to, in La Roche uh, in 2018. Maybe. Yeah, uh, six, yeah. Oh, and you were back in so Kazakhstan before that. For, for I basically, you were just for, working here for one year. Uh, one year out of all these fifteen years, I spent back home. So, so you also have a long story with La Roche. Like again, La Roche with these guys. So student first, then admissions and enrollment officer for wow. three years, yeah, crazy. and then as a lecturer for also I think three, from two thousand eighteen right? and it's twenty twenty two. It's interesting yeah. because also in our positions there back in this in this school, which I, I don't know if you mentioned, but La Roche is like a Swiss. Uh, hospital management school in headquarters in Switzerland, but then they also have a uh, campus here in Shanghai, Marbella, and I think we said in uh, uh, when we talked Abu to Dhabi, in Abu Dhabi, I think they have. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we were teaching at the time, uh, Pascal, you're in the FMB, yeah. right? Yeah. And then I was teaching, uh, at the time I was teaching like principles of economics and accounting, oh, yeah. and then you were teaching that. Yeah, I was, I was teaching that, accounting. Was teaching yeah, yeah. Fully. Relate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. Everything related. All ah, he was doing. He was doing marketing and economics mainly. I, I replaced the person who was teaching financial managerial accounting, but he also taught this, I think. Yeah. And then, so, so, so to, maybe to sum it up, you taught you taught accounting, managerial accounting, and economics. Same with you, and same with me, actually. Some of the Those subjects we taught together over these years. All taught. Yeah. So that was within a period of time of probably five to six years, and then these are introductory, uh, you know, like topics to the hospitality management school. So that's the major, but they need to have a little bit of uh, background in mm -hmm. some specific areas, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. To apply it yeah. to, yeah. So whatever it is, to different levels of money. Okay. So you and were then there. The last thing. Uh -huh. uh, well. When he left, he left to this place uh, where I'm working right now. Yeah, actually, that's another one. You want to tell them about it? Uh, yeah, so basically, <laughs> uh, so I moved to Chiendaohu. This is another hospitality school. It's actually from Australia, it's called Anglis. Uh, you can check it out, maybe. But then I was there in Chiendaohu. Um, I was uh, hired also as a lecturer. I was teaching some subjects in hospitality. Uh, Chiendaohu is like two hours away in uh, bullet train. That was like two years ago. And then I got this other offer, but I'm working right now. So I can like tell you, right? Like if you guys were interested, like I took over on that position, which was also quite nice. Yeah. But it worked out well, mm -hmm. right? So you moved away from that position at some point because <laughs> you found something else and then I moved in and uh, since then I've been working there so that's more than a bit more than a year now. Also basically. one of the things that I would like to say here is like because for example years ago many years ago um, when they were during the recruitment process of China like you know like they, uh -huh. they, they hire basically like any there were not a lot of requirements right yeah. we, we can say that but now as time is you know like passing and china is progressing in many uh -huh. different things and stuff so they're becoming a little bit more strict into like like for example like you enrolled to a phd i just finished you have a master's as well enrolling to different things so they're becoming a little bit tough to give these positions um no, it's getting a bit more that? strict up maybe mm. right I guess in terms of requirements could be yeah in terms mm -hmm. of requirements okay so then um, one of the things that when you arrived to China for the first time uh, what was something that actually surprises you oh, at that nice. time surprised you like you're like oh, oh. Wow. I thought it was like living in Kazakhstan but then <laughs> I saw okay so I would have to say this uh, the scale of it already surprised me but on, at the same time in terms of for example the people that I see around me or the food that I see around me I felt closer to home than I was when I uh, when I was in New Zealand here yeah yeah the culture because is because again we, we are neighbors with China so we do have some, yeah, some similarities yes right? and we have some of their yeah. foods we have the people and so if you would live in the um, north of in the north of China maybe even much more I mean, well, very similar. Related, right? Like similar. Uh, northwest, your, yeah, would yeah. Be. You're surrounded by which countries in Kazakhstan? So that would be well, China, Russia. Then we have Kyrgyzstan, and then we have Uzbekistan, and might be uh, Uzbekistan. One more, yeah. yeah. And then China has like uh, around 14 countries, I think. Like they have borders with. So it's actually like a lot of influence from China, obviously, to all of these like <laughs> countries around. So the culture is probably like quite, quite, uh, in, in, quite some similar. Ways, in some ways, in some ways, yeah, just like like what uh, ways as example. Uh, <laughs> Could you say <laughs> like with China, we're neighboring with uh, Xinjiang, which is the biggest province in China. Uh, uh, it is the biggest province in China, and it's also connect uh, was connecting it through the um, Silk Road, right? Yeah. Uh, before, so um, we do have a lot of Uyghur people. 
as well uh, in Kazakhstan. So I'm oh, very, yeah? fam very familiar yeah. with this, quite familiar with food. And in my family, uh, even though I said, yeah, local people generally don't eat spicy food, but in my family, we cook a lot of um, close in some ways to Chinese foods. Because, again, Chinese food is a, is a huge, like a tree, branches yeah. of different yeah. could you, cuisines. So could, could you before like explain a little bit what's the Uyghur people? Just, just to yeah, just to just to explain. Uyghur people are the locals of the Xinjiang, which is the pro one of the provinces in China, like I mentioned. Uh, they're Muslim people, uh, so they have their own uh, well culture, culture, diet, and everything, history. Yeah, um, and and like we have 11? a lot of uh, Uyghur people in Kazakhstan because uh, we're neighbors. A lot of people moved there. Uh, yeah. So it, yeah. yeah, I think I was reading as well. Like uh, it's about like eleven million uh, people around that area and mm -hmm. then obviously like, it's quite different to china but it's still chinese but it's true like they, they go to many different places similar to the border in north like harbin with china to russia mm -hmm. so a lot of influence there like with the russians and yeah. china as well right yeah okay so there uh so in kazakhstan what else did you see like similarities uh with your country and china well similarities probably end there uh and then it's uh all the differences I guess start <laughs> and that's the people, uh, the food still, uh, the variety here is insane, right? I mean, I mean I've been here for so many years and we, uh, we can all still try, go to some place and try something new that we yeah, have never tried never until ending, now, it right. just never ends. We just order what? Eel. And it's eel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we order yeah, we're sitting here at a uh, Japanese place right now. But yeah, Shanghai is great for variety. So for this part, uh, the city is, uh, is never boring, it's always changing. It is always changing. So, uh, in terms of comparing like provinces that you've lived, do you like uh, better? Not, 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 uh, or I, I've traveled to quite a few, but I haven't lived in lived in too many. Uh, mostly, well, uh, Shanghai all this time for work, for uh, for studies, um, and now it's Zhejiang, which is the neighboring sort of province, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. And again, it's quite similar. Um, but that city, Chendao, who is we mentioned, it, it translates as Thousand uh, Lake. Uh, it's, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's a town. It's thousand a to Island ta Lake. Thousand Island Lake. So, oh, yeah. 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 And um, it's, a, it's a nice place uh, to go there. So do you think it's, you prefer to live there, let's say Chendao, which is a little bit more like rural maybe? Or do it you is. prefer like uh, Shanghai? Uh, I, I have quite a few hobbies and interests and it's definitely easier to kind of uh, feed to those interests there, yeah. in Shanghai. Oh, in Shanghai, yeah, because yeah. you like can find chess? any anything you want. There is a chess club. Uh, he used so to by play. the way, he's a no, 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 absolutely <laughs> not, absolutely not. How okay, much is that? But we have twenty one hundred. No, oh, no, twenty two. So no, no official that. rating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we, so we we had some chess clubs. We do some board games. We used so to go there on uh, every Thursday. Yeah, fitness related stuff. You can meet up with people and do it together. Did you go one time with us to the chess club? Maybe one time. No, I, I didn't want to like uh, offend people there. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm there are many different kinds of clubs. So, and then I remember so Camille yeah. told me, hey, just come to this chess club. Because we used to play yeah. uh, in the school sometimes. And it was quite... Uh, no, quite yeah, yeah, yeah. Not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> so work-wise... In case Michael Wiley is looking this. <laughs> oh, <wow>. Work-wise... <laughs> <laughs> now we need a <laughs> really watching it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah work-wise... Send uh, the clip to <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh -huh. Sorry, yeah. I was saying the... In terms of work, it's a good location because it's quiet and peaceful. Uh, you can really uh, recompose and just yeah. to de-stress. Yeah. Uh, but for hanging out with friends, you see, uh, I'm here today just to meet with you guys because uh, otherwise, if you, if you don't have any plans, there is not, not much to do unless you want to just travel. But then around. that could also help with your hobbies, right? If nobody bothers you yes. or like this, then also yeah. you can follow your uh, hobbies a little bit. So, so I was working there, right? Like uh, six months in Chennai. And then I remember like on the weekends, if I didn't come to Shanghai or something, it was like, quite chill like Very I would nice just go there. there's, there's a swimming pool with an amazing view and you just go oh, there I would just take my book and then just sit really like almost yeah, like yeah. little meditation yeah, you yeah, know sure. it was like quite you get away from all that yeah very different like right. living in a city so it yeah. has its, its its pros as well now all cities are connected through the high-speed railway so you can be so like in central China we are on the most eastern side of China but right now I have um, uh, well, if I want to, let's say, travel to central China, it just takes, uh, well, four hours by speed, speed train and yeah, that, that, it's very easy to travel. 
you carry your passport right now, you, you don't even need to go through, you can even scan together with the rest of the people not to go through some... Or maybe it's basically, it's, I just want to say that it's simple. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering, it's, it's why would you easy. go to central China? What is that, Gansu? No, that's, uh, that's more... Uh, oh! No, Gansu is super... So what, you mean Changsha? Yeah. Uh, uh, right now, I, um, for my weekends, I live in uh, Changsha, which is central China. And it's again, it's a gastronomic capital. One of the, ah, very nice. if Ch China is uh, basically divided in eight main cuisines, mm, uh, you know this? each uh, cuisine, uh, cuisine branches <laughs> out <laughs> into other uh, areas, but eight, and this place is one of them. So do, do you, you know remember? those eight? Like, could you I, name them? Uh, I we'll just mentioned some, if not. Uh, uh, I, yeah, uh, okay. No, okay, so you go to the south, Chinese. you have no. Guangzhou, for example. So you have Cantonese food. So that's one thing. Shanghai, for you. Shanghai is another one, right? Uh, they consider it to be sweet in that area, in that region. And then you have this uh, Hunan, which is considered to be fresh and uh, spicy. Then you have like Chongqing and Sichuan. For this a is a different, different sort of spicy. It's a it's like mala. peppercorn sort of numbing spicy thing. It's a different. Yeah. And uh, other ones, I'm um, uh, definitely yeah, uh, the, the mus Muslim, Muslim food. Yeah, Muslim. Like in Gansu, uh, yeah. Xinjiang. Like all the Xinjiang area, right? Then like in the north, you have another Lanzhou one. Lanzhou noodles. So they're all very different, actually. So what is missing then? I don't know. But. The compound chili eats its own. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. that's quite good. I mean, like, um, what does your your family said? Like, you've been living here for such a long time. Are well, they uh, like? Um, so have I, they come? I've had an opportunity to mm -hmm. have them over here a few times, oh, three good. times, nice, in fact. Three times. And one time they stayed. Yeah, about fifteen years. Right? One time they stayed here for a month with me in Shanghai, and um, yeah, I rented Gosh. a place. I rented a place for them for one month. Wow, that's and, so good. Um, Hey, you guys it, 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 it was it was a great experience for them and uh, they, they, they really like it here and I'm hoping after this many years after COVID they haven't been here so this year if everything goes right I hope oh, uh, to, to have them over uh, this good. summer and let's go how are the flights <laughs> how are the flights <laughs> Kazakhstan China? oh uh, this year uh, between China and Kazakhstan uh, we now have a visa free oh really visa free yes, and entry excellent. yeah no, obviously they're trying okay. to it, Make yeah, people come back again, right? More because it was tourism no and it works. Come. So Kazakhstan visa free, Mexico no visa free. No, no. Oh. Still need to apply. But what they did uh, before 2019, I used to fly to Mexico. Direct flight, 16 hours. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Shanghai, Mexico. That's it. Then oh, they it took was it there up. before. Yeah, before oh. 2018, 19. Mm. So yeah. I did that like maybe. Maybe two, three years, <laughs> and then a stop, and then COVID happens. So how right? much did it cost? Like at that, at that time, time you, no. used to, you used to cost like maybe seven thousand yuan, yeah, thousand, exactly. thousand something, thousand two hundred yeah. dollars, thousand three hundred dollars round, yeah, round trip. And then now, just recently, I think like a month ago, no, they opened they a new. It, right? and so then they, they stopped yeah. the whole COVID. So in order to go to Mexico, I need to go to the U.S. first, or maybe Tokyo, maybe Seoul. Mm -hmm. or uh, mm. Canada or mm -hmm. something like this and then um, the thank you Shishia. and then the other way now is like they just started with the new flights with China Southern I think airlines and it is or China direct Eastern, flight maybe, but it's no? not from Shanghai it's from Shenzhen oh, so you need China to go to Southern. Shenzhen Shenzhen Mexico Mexico Shenzhen but they don't have one from Shanghai no so then you still need a transfer yeah but even I, I was checking I was checking the the prices and quite high. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. quite high. So I mean, still prices here still haven't really recovered, maybe fully. I it's mean, getting it better. Down, yeah, actually. just but so now the yeah more. so now the the better option for me to go Mexico on round trip, it is probably around um, twelve hundred thousand. No, yeah, 12, like 000. maybe twelve thousand. Twelve thousand yuan. Okay, wow, round that's trip. Still a lot. And then there's different different rules like of travel. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's to, like two thousand dollars round trip from here to Mexico. But you Mexico mean like back. Business class or what? No, no, no. <laughs> Just regular. And then there's some like different stopovers. One is like via Turkey, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and actually that's good because it's like twenty hours, mm -hmm. and then you can take oh, like well, a little free really tour. So okay. I think the airline provided something like this. Mm -hmm. I haven't done that, but I, I would like to. Mm -hmm. 
and then on the way back is also like 15 hours. Ah, but that's so, yeah, it depends, right? If, if yeah. Or you just go straight. Yeah. And then how far is it to Kazakhstan with a plane? How long does it take? If there is a direct flight, uh, which I never really had, because to my city, I always had to go either through sure. Ulumuchi, which is the capital of Xinjiang, uh, which is right next to my city, one hour, one hour uh, flight. So my question um, is, could you take a flight to Urumqi if and I, then take a train? No, I that mean, nice, maybe, right? maybe uh, yeah, that would be nice, but be, because this, I guess this, it goes through the, the border, trip. maybe that's why it's, it's yeah, not it that easy. Yeah. So, but, uh, uh -huh. so from Shanghai, usually to Beijing, or from Shanghai to Urumqi first, and then to Almaty. So usually it takes, you, you basically are home within a day, but if there was a direct flight, it's just like seven hours from and Shanghai all mm -hmm. the way to my what? city. Still seven hours? Because like you have to fly through the whole China if you're in Shanghai. Shanghai, you're but basically no, on a... Switzerland, the direct flight is only 11 hours. Yeah, so like from my country to yours is, is not that... Maybe, yeah. yeah it's maybe, pretty close. Maybe. Yeah. So, uh, going back a little bit to the idea of China, like for example, I just want to know because I wanted to ask you like, what are some of the, you, you say already like some similarities with China, mm -hmm. maybe some things that are not too similar. Is there some like misconception that you actually had like before coming to China and then you realize, oh wow, actually I was quite grown. I mean, normally when people, before that. they arrive to China, everybody thinks, for example, the local people, they're all hardworking, for example, right? Like, uh, there is this maybe So that's a misconception? Yeah, I guess everyone so. used to even, be even the locals would say, no, okay, yeah, we are, we're, we're lazy, we like to do, and maybe that explains why they're so inventive, because instead of doing something, uh, they will find different ways to make it easier, and that's why you, you can find anything you want in here in terms of like, you go to the online shopping, right? You get recommended some things you didn't know you needed, but suddenly you Needed once yeah. you see it. Especially you, just, when you get to buy like yeah. little devices or yeah. gadgets now electronically Everything. and stuff. It's, it's pretty much uh, a, like heaven extension. here for this part. But maybe it's not really something uh, that China stands for, right? To be like very creative or inventive. I well, except for now, for example, with all of the uh, EV industry, the, the car industry, right? Uh, do oh. they send this to, to Kazakhstan? Oh, now or it's, not? A, it's a big thing. Everybody is moving in, into electric cars, yeah. changing from you know, gas to electric cars. Yeah. Uh, tax wise is way cheaper right you don't need to pay actually any, yeah. any, any tax on those stuff, right? they subsidize um, all of the prices for uh yeah for so the plates even here in big in markets a lot of people are making a lot of money bringing cars from china to kazakhstan yeah. right now yeah yeah for sure one yeah. so, uh, about that like one little extra uh piece of information that i remember i was reading uh -huh. somewhere is that for example here in shanghai if you want to buy a car uh, you just don't buy the car, uh, you know, just as we normally buy them, but you need to also pay for the plate, right? So the number of plates, plate, the, the plate is like super expensive. This is like around like 100,000 yeah, yuan, yeah, as something as like this. Car itself. Uh, yeah, it depends on the city, but it depends on the city. Uh, yeah. Big cities like Shanghai, like all these top uh, cities. The, there are so many cars, so I guess they control it this way because. How much is in yuan? So dollars? it's about yeah, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. You'll have to pay just to get this number plate. Just to get the plate. Okay, first, you need to go through a lottery, and then if you win the lottery to get the license plate, then you need to pay that. So it's not just about the money. You first need to be a bit lucky to actually being allowed to pay that money, right? Yeah, it's it's like a pool where you submit yeah. your application, and then if you're if you're chosen, then you are allowed to oh, pay. You get and the get license, it. right? Driver license. Driver's license. license. Yeah. So you apply, you, you had to do the exam and everything? Yeah, so in case somebody's interested for the Here. driver license. Uh -huh. uh, so it depends if you already have one or not. Uh, so I had like a Swiss one, which I then translated into the uh, international one, which you can do like in your home country. Like it's very, it should be very easy, very cheap. And then uh, that one afterwards you can go to China and then you just have to do like the theory exam in China but you don't have to do the practical one anymore yeah because because they kind of recognize the international one in China so which is good yeah. but you have to do the theory the theory the theoretical right yeah. so apparently I've heard that it's a little bit uh, difficult to pass <laughs> <laughs> I mean you have to study a little bit yeah yeah, uh, yeah it's more or less the same rules if you're familiar with the rules in Europe also, I don't know about other countries but in Europe as example it's more or less, it's, it's very similar. And other questions yeah. in, sorry to interrupt, in yeah. English or Chinese? Yeah, so it's in English, but then that's where the problem starts, right? Because, yeah, because the, the translation yeah, is not the quite translation yeah. is very bad. And yeah. I mean, I made like some mistakes really. Because, yeah. Just so, because of that? Because of the translation. But you have to apply for that uh, license. Like it has to be like a local Chinese license. I yeah. cannot drive with my own Mexican uh, uh, So here's license. the thing, actually you can, oh, yeah. as long as you're 
like here on either tourist or business visa, but you're not allowed to drive when you're on residence permit. So if you come for travel, you're allowed to drive. Oh, really? As, as far as I know, I'm not obviously like, I don't know exactly the law, but I think you're allowed to, but better check it if, if you want to do that. But I think you can, but then once you live here, then you're actually not allowed to do that anymore. Mm, just yeah. as a tourist, maybe. But, but, yeah. but would they give you the car or they give you the driver? Yeah. No, 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 you, the whole you, thing, you're allowed to drive. I mean, it's the same in Europe also. The Chinese, as example, if they go to Europe, they're allowed to drive there. Yeah, for sure. If they're tourists. I mean, that's but like normal. There, they're, but here, they're normal okay, there, yeah. so probably, yeah. So there are different regulations on that, but best to kind of check it out. Yeah. So I then mean, I actually did it because I have the car, or my girlfriend has a car, and then it was very useful for us, obviously, to, if we both have the driver. It's just license. traveling around, right? Yeah. yeah. And since then, it's perfect because we would sometimes take the RV, like the big like uh, like recreation RV. vehicle RV and then we would travel like as example all the way Xinjiang mm. and in the northwest and like those areas and then with the RV it's, it's was that right. electric electrical no <laughs> <laughs> now because Very, uh, uh, now diesel. yeah about the the topic of the cars yeah, the car, I've seen yeah, like too yeah. many too many cars like they're coming yeah, in like nice there's so many. Did, and so many new brands also. did you guys see the Xiaomi yeah, the Xiaomi yeah, car. Huawei. I think I posted something in uh, in my in my social media or something about the Xiaomi. Mm -hmm. So I was reading that the how does that call like okay, so you can charge it one time for thirty minutes, and it would take you around eight hundred kilometers. And the like and and the uh, the price for charging it that mm -hmm. thirty minutes is about one hundred yuan. Yeah. Which is how much in dollar? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Like fifteen dollars. So I was like, when they were telling me that in the store, I was like, oh really? So now you just pay like maybe fifteen dollars to get it like fully charged, and then you can go this, you know, um, so many kilometers. Is it fully charged though after half an hour? Uh, well, I mean, what I understood. Yeah. Okay. Fifty percent or something. Yeah, imagine yeah, that. But how can you drive? Yeah. Eight hundred kilometers seems far because even Although, a Tesla drives only like five hundred in total if it's fully charged, right? Maybe. Yeah. Four, five, how much? How no, far does it I've, I've, I've seen, I've seen some know. like over thousand. No, but okay. probably that's depending a bit tricky on it. because it depends yeah, yeah. on what condition they test. Like the weight, like how many people. So write in the comments the correct Germany. number, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like what happened with Volkswagen, then I mean, it depends how those cars measure it and how they apply that. And how many people is on board, what right? Exactly like the weight. a kilometer for them and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now there's always like a, like a lot of loopholes into numbers, this, right? Yeah, so yeah. now there's a lot of um, people jumping into the idea of you know, having an EV, EV, EV. And then actually there's a lot of subsidies, not only in China, Mm -hmm. But in many countries, right? Now we have actually in Mexico, I, I think like if you guys check a uh, Liverpool, that's a store for many mm -hmm. different things. They're selling this car, the not the not the Xiaomi, but the other one. What's the other one? Huawei. Not the Huawei. The other one. BYD. Oh, uh, no idea. Ah, they're selling a BYD in one of its um, versions. I think you know it goes by destiny, yeah, yeah. By the, the dynasties. Oh. The Tang uh, dynasty, yeah, yeah. Oh. whatever dynasty. The BYD cars. Okay. Yeah, yeah the BYD. Like that, so yeah. they have like one or two uh, models of, of BYD cars. They're going to shut down your... Yeah, company. there's a little yeah. police coming now behind. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I think you can actually like get them, but still expensive. From where? From one departmental store in Mexico. Okay. So you can actually buy it, pay it, I think, on credit or something. Yeah. And then they will just give you, but I think, I don't know how's the infrastructure actually to be, mm -hmm. you know, That's charging it around the city. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit difficult now yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. Here, apparently, like there are many more areas which you can actually charge that. Mm -hmm. And all of us, for example, here we have um, electric uh, yeah, pincher, mm -hmm. right? So, oh, okay. do you also have people? No, I, oh, I haven't. Have but because you were I living here in the city, you didn't. I, I, I had a bike, just like a bicycle, uh, so I used that. Uh, Electric one. No, <laughs> <laughs> just a regular bicycle. Uh, so yeah, I haven't. Haven't had, but it's it's a popular thing. How much That's is the price of uh, the Ampintra of an electrical bike? Two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. So for That's two, three hundred dollars, you can buy like a new electrical bike, like the ones that are just coming in the back. Yeah, and uh, quite good. You can charge it for probably what one or two hours. One uh, like Yeah, for for one RMB. For one RMB, for a few cents of a dollar. And then you get like 30 kilometers if it's yeah, new. Yeah. 30, 40 kilometers. It's quite cheap actually. <laughs> so That's how I go good. every day to yeah, my work. To work yeah. Yeah. yeah, because I'm, what I'm living is like three kilometers from where I work. Charge it one, two yuan every two days, yeah, something. Like and then it's like soup. It's almost free, right? Yeah, it is. If you do, if you do the math into how much it costs you per day, it's convenient. Yeah, it's, it's cheap. cheap. No, I mean, because even the bus costs like two RMB, right? 
So yeah. the make sure is like the same price, like, I mean, the same price to go to work and back maybe two or three times is the same price like one bus ticket. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot That's of, uh, logistically yeah. speaking, a lot of options to go around Shanghai mm -hmm. and China and everything. Hey, so back to the, to the, to the idea with uh, Kazakhstan. Is there any big community in China, like yeah. Kazakh, Kazakh community somehow I, or not really? I have not experienced that. There were some, I just remember that at some point there were uh, two Russian restaurants, Russian restaurants though, uh, where uh, quite a few, uh -huh. I guess uh, Kaz Kaz Russian uh, restaurants. people from Kazakhstan, they do like also to eat uh, Russian uh, cuisine from time to time. They miss uh, some of the sort of local food uh, from back home because we have Russian food in abundance. And uh, But yeah, no, in, in terms of communities, I, I'm not so sure. I, or maybe I was not part of that because I was always in an international mix uh, because of my uh, college and because of the people I was surrounded uh, with. So it was always people from all over, but not, not, not exactly from my country. Yeah, because yeah. I remember, for example, when we were working together, uh, there was another, my internal, how does it called, my TA, kitchen assistant, no, the assistant. Yeah. Uh -huh. So she was from uh, Kazakhstan as well. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But she was from Astana. Okay. Oh, the capital, capital. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember because uh, there is some very famous chocolate. Uh, I remember yeah. she brought it, okay. like it was like the, the flag yeah, of Kazakh, uh, yeah. Kazakh like the blue yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. And it was just so proud of that chocolate. <laughs> and okay. I was like, okay, so that's like. She didn't bring that to me because I'm Swiss. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Kazakh chocolate versus the Swiss one. So we have okay, the, so then the community, uh -huh. it feels like maybe it's not so big in. Uh, uh, in maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe you have. You just need to get into that, right? Like the Kazakh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's, how about the Swiss community? Yeah. Thousands. It's quite big, I think. And I, I just know, big. Uh, somebody told me a few like months ago, I remember, and I was surprised it, it was quite big. Uh, I remember it was like thousands, I don't remember exactly, but mm -hmm. it was a lot of people. And hey. then I know I have some like WeChat groups and stuff, and then there are people also like mm -hmm. five, six, seven hundred people, only mm -hmm. one WeChat group, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For like Swiss in Shanghai. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you imagine that? Did you get to know some? Yeah, I know some of them. Not all, obviously, but some. Yeah, because we also used to work with some hey. of them. You guys do fun you to go. Hey! Hola! Hey. ¿Cómo estás? So here's the Roshanga that speaks Spanish. <laughs> uh, we're, doing, we're doing the video. Say yeah. hi, Dima. Oh that's a hi, good Dima. friend of ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, say hi. hi hey, you want to sit here? Come here, yeah. 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 Come. Got to give <laughs> All right, guys. So just the last, yeah, yeah, okay, just the last, just to wrap it up. Just to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, any yeah. final thoughts that you nice. would like to say to the people? Like, that no, I think <laughs> we'll, we'll be keeping you guys updated with any new things that are going to happen because we hang out from time to time, and uh, if there is anything interesting oh that we want to share, we will. In the meantime, I hope it was interesting or useful in any way. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for your time. Let's order some guys. food. Thank yeah. you, La Vida in China. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, subscribe to his channel. <laughs> All right. Everything. See you guys <laughs> next time. Have a good See one. You. Adios, amigos. Bye bye.